So it occurred to me that I've been doing this YouTube thing for a little over six years now and a lot of you don't really know who I am. Well, this video is designed to shine a light on my background, not only as a guitarist, but also as a person. The 16th of October 1995, a little after 6am, I was born in the centre of England near the city of Birmingham. I was raised by my parents and sister in a small town called Wensbury on the outskirts of Warsaw. All of my family lived within a five minute car journey, so we were all pretty close when I was growing up. My earliest memory as a child was when I was four years old. I remember being at my nan's house and she asking me, how old are you next week? And my response being, holding my hand out signifying five. I don't really know why of all things that's my earliest recollection, but I guess we don't get to choose. Around September 2000s when I started primary school. Growing up, I'd always be extremely nervous and anxious. I remember being terrified of going back to school after the weekend. I just felt like something bad was going to happen. But that school is where I met my first friend. His name was Jacob. I don't really know exactly what we had in common, but he's my first friend that I remember. My favourite subject was always art. For my age, I was always quite good at drawing, to be honest. I actually remember finding a drawing of Gohan from Dragon Ball Z that I made when I was 11 years old because I signed it and put my age on it. And it's so much better than what I could do now. I think this draw my life would be a lot better drawing wise if I'd done it back then than compared to now. <laughs> when I was around eight or nine years old, which would have been 2003, 2004 sort of time, I was given the inspiration to start playing guitar. I was at my uncle Mark's house and I remember going into his office and he was just noodling around on his Stratocaster. He was playing the opening riff to Merry the Little Lamb by Steve Ray Vaughan. And I was just so blown away. I remember telling him to join the bands. I just found it so amazing. I also loved his guitar. It was a red and orange Sunburst 1957 reissue Stratocaster. The popping colours really looked amazing to me. And a few months later, after pestering my dad enough times, he got me my first guitar. It was a knockoff Strat. It was black with what I think was a rosewood looking fretboard. I remember my cousin having this later on for his birthday. But that's the guitar I learnt my first few riffs on. Mary the Little Lamb, Smoke on the Water. That's all I can actually remember me playing at that age, maybe back in Black 2 by ACDC. So I played that for a couple of years and then started taking lessons at my primary school. I wish I could remember that guitar teacher's name because he really filmed with so much confidence and he always insisted I was gifted. He also gave me the opportunity to play in front of my school during assembly, which was brave of him. That also was a couple of hundred kids remember, so little anxious Matt, that was a huge step for me. <laughs> so after playing that guitar for a couple of years, it was my birthday. I saw my guitar back in the living room when I came downstairs and I remember just being a little bit confused because it's usually my bedroom. My dad told me to get my guitar out and play something, so I unzipped my bag and I saw red. So usually I had that black guitar, remember, so I was a little bit confused at this point. So I unzipped a little bit further and there it was, the guitar that I fell in love with that night. The same strap that my uncle owned, I lost my mind and just played it for so long. I think I played Smoke and the Wolf about half an hour straight. <laughs> Around this time was when I was introduced to anime too. My cousin Dan was around our house after school one night and he was watching this thing called Dragon Ball. I didn't really get it at first, but this really set the seeds for me wanting to watch more anime. Every night at 9pm on Cartoon Network, Dragon Ball Z was on. It was around the time where the Freezer saga was being aired and I was just so enthralled in it. I just found it so amazing. When Goku used a spirit bomb, I remember running up to my sister's room and playing out the scene, just holding my hands up with 10 yards of spirit bomb myself. <laughs> I always ended up watching it all. I didn't watch any other animes though because I didn't really like them. I was just so obsessed with Dragon Ball Z. When I was still in primary school, my mum and dad decided that it would be best if they got divorced. I lived with them my whole life until this point. I didn't really understand what was happening all too well as I was still young. But having my dad live somewhere else quite upset me. I just felt like we became quite disjointed as a family. Then when I was just about to start year six, mum decided it would be best to move to Burton. It's about 20 miles away so I had to say goodbye to all my friends. I had a really happy upbringing with them too. My years in primary school are probably the happiest of my life, so it was a big turning point in my life. Going back to the anxiety and excessive nerves that I suffered from, like going back to school after a weekend, moving not only location but also school was so scary for me. I remember being introduced to my new class, the more staring at me like, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> I was just so scared. They all crowded around me at playtime and oddly enough seemed to be amazed at my drawing and football skills. Apparently I was alright at it for some reason. So 11 months later I started secondary school. Great, another new school to move to. Needless to say I was petrified again. I didn't really have many friends for the first years. I kind of lost touch with the people in year 6 that I just moved to school with. But I just kind of walk around the school grounds at break on my own. <laughs> Moving to the new area really made me an outcast and since then I've never really had a ton of friends really. So like most kids do when they don't have a lot of friends, I turn to gaming. This was the time when I fell out of love with pretty much everything I loved before. Guitar, football and drawing. 
gaming just completely took over my life. I spent every night after school playing Call of Duty for hours and not having the social life at all. Then it spread to school where people started taking the mick out of me and then just people just started to not like me because I'd always play games all the time. So I was a bit more of an outcast than before. Until one day I thought that enough was enough. I sold my Xbox 360 and used the money to buy an Epic Phone SG400, which I still have along with a strap for my uncle. I remember learning Metallica, some more Metallica, and a little bit more Metallica <laughs> until I discovered Avenged Sevenfold. Me, my dad, and a few of his friends were on holiday in Wales, so we went to an arcade one night. I saw Guitar Hero, and as the rejuvenated guitarist that I was, I had to go on it. I saw Almost Easy by Avenged Sevenfold. I had to go on it, and I just completely fell in love with him. Not only that, but I got pretty obsessed. I started learning all the songs, and it really started to improve me as a guitar player. I remember one day I came to school not long after that and my friend Sam uploaded a guitar cover. I thought, hmm, shouldn't I be doing that too? So I went home and set on my Nokia phone as a camera and played The Day That Never Comes by Metallica. This is still the first guitar cover I ever posted and it's not even on this channel. It's an old one that I still have public as a matter of fact, but I won't mention the name. After that I decided to start a new channel where I post better covers under the channel of my name. I called this Matty M. I started covering Avenged Sevenfold as I got a bit better so I moved on from Metallica and after 20 or so videos I started getting recognised by the A7X community. This was the birth of my channel. I started feeling so proud and happy that people were liking my playing and subscribing to see more. The feeling of pride is something that I've always chased in my creative endeavours. I began hanging out with the music kind of kids at school and I felt like I had a place I belonged to again. Around this time of rejuvenation in my life something very dark came to light. I actually found out that my mum was diagnosed with cancer, a tumour on her brain to be specific. I know she had cancer at a point when I was very young in my life, but she ended up surviving. So I didn't really understand just how serious this was. I thought that everything would be okay again, like it ended up being before. I didn't act the way I think I should have. I didn't really know what was happening. I just thought my mum was unwell, but would get better. But she didn't. There was a point where she was told she could go back to work and drive again so it looked like something was going to be getting better again but then they found more. It got worse. I began feeling petrified that any time I saw it could be the last and I just remember crying every night because I just felt like I'd never said to her what I felt like I should have said. And then she began staying in the hospital and having operations to try and get rid of it. Until one night on the 22nd November 2014, just after 11pm, she passed away. At the first instance of hearing the news, I didn't really feel anything. I didn't cry, I didn't get angry, I just kind of felt nothing. There's a part of me that was actually relieved because I knew just how much she was suffering and she changed in her personality. I know a few days before, I actually did get to say my goodbye to her because I knew it would be any day then. But I just remember that after saying my piece with her, she just kind of looked at me and didn't really know who I was. So I kind of knew that that wasn't really the one that was in front of me anymore. I don't really remember much about the time after she passed. It's just a complete blur to me. I don't. There's not really a, a point where I remember getting a little bit better. It's just all blurred into one now. After that, though, I finished college where I studied music, technology and performance for three years. I actually got a triple distinction, which was the best grade I'd ever gotten, because I didn't really do very well in school. <laughs> that then led to the start of my life of employment. I got my first job at a boots warehouse where I work hours that I hated, and I actually started to get paid for, but nevertheless I hated it. <laughs> so I got a new job where I still work at today, in fact. At that same time, literally to the week where I started that new job, I met who I thought was the girl of my dreams. The first person I really felt like I connected with for years. Needless to say, this was the first time I experienced heartbreak over a girl. This is also a very dark time for me. I just started hanging around with people that I probably shouldn't have and just doing things that was very out of personality for me. And yeah, I just kind of turned to anime to actually escape my emotions. Because anime was something that always just made me happy as a kid. So I started watching new things such as Tokyo Ghoul, Parasite, Attack on Titan, all the kind of standard ones. And I just really fell in love with it all. A little did I know that this would direct me towards the light at the end of the tunnel. That series of events led me to realise that life's too short to actually live it the way that people want you to. I began craving that feeling that I love most, pride, back when I started uploading guitar covers. I started getting more serious about YouTube and blended it with my love for anime. Making videos and covers that I really felt proud of and had fun with and really fun with happiness that was lacking before in all honesty. This is the start of my anime guitar channel that you know to this day. I just want you all to know that without your love and support I'd still be that miserable mess that I was not too long ago in fact. 
This journey that I've started has given me a new lease on life and one that I don't plan on giving up on. Whether you're new, an old subscriber of mine, thank you for believing in me and enjoying what I do. This is my purpose in life and I'm so happy to be sharing it with you all. Thank you for listening to this video.